Today we are canning one of our favorite lamb stew recipes. We are going to be making Moroccan stew. So Moroccan stew is quite simple and very easy to can. There's very few ingredients and then you kind of tend to build it up when you actually make the meal. Uh, what I do is basically it's lamb, onions, tomato sauce, and a whole bunch of spices in a jar. And then uh, when I open it to cook my meal that day, I will add maybe some peppers or uh, snap peas or something like that. And then it's just served on a bed of rice. And so we're gonna today talk about making the stew. And I am doing a big batch, cause that's how I always operate, and canning these in pint jars because I find a pint jar is plenty by the time I add uh, other ingredients when I get it out of the pantry. So we're gonna start out with eight pounds of lamb stewing meat cut up. I like to cut mine to nice little bite-sized pieces. They tend to come from the butcher in bigger chunks and then I end up cutting it up. And yes, there's a cat. There's always a cat whenever meat is involved in the kitchen. Um, but basically uh, I like to chop it all down, cut off any excess fat, that sort of stuff. We're kind of particular about our meat. Um, and uh, basically that's it. So I've drizzled a little bit of olive oil in this, not too much, maybe about a tablespoon and a half. And I'm just going to let this all cook on a medium heat as I brown the meat. I wanna get it all browned before I then add in my onions. So I'm not gonna bore you with this process. We will get it browned up and then I'll bring you back. All right, so our meat is basically browned off. We're next going to add our onions, four cups of onions chopped up. You can chop those to whatever really works for you for size. I like mine a little bit chunkier, but mix that in. And then we're also at this time going to add our garlic. Now the recipe is for four cloves of garlic. We like garlic around here. So I'm, I went with six, but you do you. And that's homegrown garlic, so it's wonderful and strong. So basically we're just going to mix this in. We're gonna let it simmer for a little bit. And then we're going to add in spices and all the other good stuff. All right, so our onions and garlic are nicely simmered in there for a little bit. We were about five minutes. Now I'm going to add one cup of dry white wine. It's been sitting in the fridge a long time. It's not very white anymore, but it'll still work. Gotta use up what we got. Uh, recipe is actually for sherry, but I don't have cooking sherry, so dry white wine it is. There we are, that's mixed in. And now we're going to add our wonderful spices. We need two teaspoons of turmeric, one heaping tablespoon of salt. Now remember this is going to make 10 jars, so it is spread amongst quite a good distance. <clears throat> one heaping tablespoon of oregano. And again, I'd go a little extra on the spices because it just puts more flavor same way I did with the garlic a little extra now the next part you can kind of pick your poison I guess you could say um, it calls for crushed red peppers or crushed hot peppers uh, I don't have either um, basically they want a quarter cup per batch and I'm doing four times in order to make this a canning recipe so I would need a whole cup of crushed peppers or hot pepper type stuff I don't have that, so what I'm using is paprika, our home done, mixed with a little bit of our hot paprika. So I'm kind of winging it on how much. So I'm gonna go with a teaspoon heaping of the regular paprika. So there you can see we've got our paprika in there, and then I'm going to go with a half teaspoon of the hot, just for flavor. But like I said, if you happen to have the peppers, then go for it for sure. And then next, we're going to add my favorite part, the raisins. Now, you would need a whole cup of raisins. I love the raisins. I think they just make this recipe. So as you can see, I've heaped that up. We're probably actually about a cup and a quarter maybe. And the only thing left to add to this is one liter or one quart jar 
of tomatoes, whether it's stewed tomatoes, tomato juice, some type of tomato product. So I'm going to use my tomato juice. Now, the one thing I would say is don't bung it all in at once because you don't want it too liquidy. Let's see here. I'm gonna go a little bit more. Like I said, I always add extra to this recipe when I take it out of the pantry, whether it's veggies or that sort of thing. And it goes on a bed of rice. So it's nice to have a little bit of that extra sauce so that you don't need soy sauce or something like that. So to be honest, I think I am gonna put the whole thing in. And then basically we're gonna get this to a boil and let it simmer for 20 minutes, which will thicken it up again but just get all those flavors into the meat and then we'll be back to can it up. Okay, so this is simmered for about 15 minutes. I actually did a taste test and I added another little bit of uh, the hot chili powder. So I guess I probably put in about a half teaspoon of that in the end, but that left a result I was happy with. So the next step now is to get this into our jars. Basically, pretty simple process. Try and get enough liquid as well as the meat. Woo, as I get covered in it. So you can see there, you want to leave the one inch head space. Woo, that's hot. Very hot. I have a damp paper towel here. We're just going to wipe our rim, put our lid on. Yes, I'm reusing lids. But basically, that's the process. You want it. I didn't really demonstrate that very well. You want it basically finger tight. I don't crank that anymore. And then we're going to put it into our pressure canner. This is a pressure canning recipe, so please keep that in mind. Anytime you're canning meat or some vegetables, beans, that sort of thing, it is pressure canning. I'm hoping to get at least the nine jars, maybe ten. But that is the basic process. I will bring you back when I've got these all in the canner, and we'll have a quick chat about that. All right, so we only ended up with eight jars. A little disappointed with that. I really thought it was going to at least make nine, but that's okay. Eight jars is still eight jars. We've got them in the pressure canner. The pressure canner's already uh, on the element, on high. I've got hot water in that's actually heating up even more. Next step is our lid, which we need to put our ring on. And I always use a little bit of vegetable oil, olive oil, something like that, just a little bit on your fingers, and run it around the ring before you put it in. Just increases that length of life that this gasket is going to be good for. So we've got that oiled, we've got it in. Next step, lid goes on. And now we're going to wait for this to come up. In pressure inside you're going to see let me just move this here this little uh, funnel here you're going to see steam shooting out that for quite a few minutes another great indicator that your canner is ready is this little thing here will pop up even if you don't push that pressure gauge on this will pop up and that's sort of what I use as my gauge that the canner is ready to go so basically now it is time for the waiting game and uh, we want this to cook at 10 pounds pressure for we're actually only an hour and 15 minutes because I only did pint jars. If you were doing quarts, it's an hour and a half. So we're doing 75 minutes as opposed to 90. Uh, so we will bring you back after uh, this process is over and we'll see if we've had any siphoning or anything like that. I've not had a problem with this recipe before, but uh, you never know, things can change. So we'll bring you back at the end and we'll take a look at these jars. All right, so we had our hour and 15 minutes and we've allowed it to decompressurize. I don't know if that's the right word, but you know what I mean. Pressure is no longer in it. Our little button has gone down all on its own. We've not tried to make that happen any quicker because that can cause siphoning. So we don't want that. We're going to take this off. I always tip away from myself. Oh, we definitely have a little siphoning. Bring you in a little closer so you can see here. We definitely had a little bit of leakage but that's okay. Oh. Our water's not coming out clean on this one, but that can also be caused by it being, oops, that can also be caused by it being a little bit on the greasier side. There was a little bit of extra oil because lamb is 
an oilier meat. And I also will admit, I did not pay super great attention and did let it get a little bit higher than I should have. Not to uh, detrimental levels, but it did get a little bit high. So that could also be a cause for this siphoning. I'm not too concerned about the little bit of siphoning that did happen, but we'll come back once these have stopped bubbling and just look to see how bad it actually was. Well, there we are. They're all cooled down and no longer bubbling. And you can see definitely a little bit of siphoning. The jars were very greasy as well, so I probably should have drained more out of the meat than I did, but that's all right. They They'd all sealed, all eight, and they're still going to taste delicious. The one thing you want to make sure is that you've got at least three quarters of the jar kind of filled when you go to put this away. Um, and we've got that definitely. So I'm not worried about this and it's going to taste delicious in the future. So if you enjoyed this recipe, definitely let me know in the comments and I hope you give it a try and let us know how it turns out.